Hey friends, so today I'm going to be working on my Tajima TMFX C902. Yeah, sorry I had to look because the numbers are just stupid confusing. So what we're doing today is installing a replacement 12 volt power supply for something that's failed in here. Because this stupid board is too grand new and $900 for them to repair anything including one of these really inexpensive little $2 capacitors. Pirates of the electronics repair industry. So anyway, this is a $10 device and it's going to mount yeah, right like that. So anyway, let's let's get started. So first things first, I've unplugged it. And now I have some suitably oversized wires. So let me get these stripped off. Uh, I don't think you need to watch that. All right, so I'm using boat cable, which is tinned, and it's a little bit better quality than what you could get from Home Depot. And then I'm using my crimpers here. Ouch, my hands are just hurting lately. So I got three more of those to do. All right, I had to change the uh, ends because I didn't check to see if they would actually fit. So this is going to be fairly easy. Maybe just a shot camera. Neutral is next. So those are good. Let me go get some more wire. I'll be back. All right. So these are our volt, volt our DC negative. Can't seem to get under. And our DC positive. All right. Well, let's just connect the positive real quick. got some mounting tape here that we're going to use to secure this and this is some beastly stuff 
I don't remember if this was an Amazon or an eBay thing, but it is uh, it's called BHB tape, which is very high bonding, and it is a beast. So once it's on there, it's on there. So we're going to mount that right there. see what I've done. Now I was originally going to connect this a little bit lower but I've decided I'm going to bring it up here. And the first thing we're going to do is disconnect this ground wire. Just temporarily. So I need to go get a mounting eye because this is bigger than it needs to be a bird back. Alright, so what this does is it bonds the neutral of our um, booster power supply to the neutral of the system. And um, this uses a common neutral, which is kind of interesting because there are some AC components in here. There's some DC components at different voltages. Um, it's just an interesting way to do it. So I picked up this on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. This was like eh, 11 or $12, and these are little T-style saddle taps. So I'm going to see if we can get this open, and there we go, without throwing it all over the place. Now, we need to break out that wire right there. What I particularly like about these is that they're they're just great for situations like this. So we're going to go ahead and just push that down, and we need some pliers. So I'll be right back. So as I was saying, what I particularly like about these is it's just easy to use. They're supposed to be easy to use. Alright, so that locked. There we go. Now we're locked in and we've got a tap. Alright, so we're going to come back with this. Now, if you don't have these pliers, you can use other pliers to crimp these. This is just happens to be the right tool, and I own a few sets of them. All right, so at that point, we have a nice tap for 12 volts, and we'll just leave it up like that. So if somebody wants to undo this at some point because the rest of this board fails and they want to replace it, they could very easily undo what I've, I've added. And that was something that was really important to me. All right, so we're going to tap these wires here. And these look like they'll tap with blue. So we'll start with the ground. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And then we don't need a whole lot of wire here. And this was an expected result. Alright, so that bonds that, and now we have a white and a black that we need to, to tap into. And this is going to be a little tight, but we'll get it done. So there is a little issue uh, on both of these where it's not uh, it's not making contact because this is not in the middle. Hopefully that'll fix it. All right, and I gotta go back up top. Okay, so
All right, that should be it. We should be ready to fire up and it should boot the computer. All right, so we're gonna fire it up. Hey, works perfectly. So this patch is inserting 12 volts into the system and that allows the computer to boot up just fine. So it is repaired. Now I have to put all this back together, so I'm gonna shut it down and work on that. All right, so off these all come. These are your servo drivers. This lonely little cable drives the fan. So let's just push that out of the way. And there it is. Yeah, those are for the back um, cable guard. Thank you. 
There are certainly simpler and cheaper ways they could have done this. They could have used a bunch of these instead of uh, an actually uh, individual um, stepper servo drivers would have been a better solution. It would have had more crap on the back of the machine, but it would have made it very modular and easy to replace. You've basically got X and Y which are straightforward, and then you've got S, which is your sewing head. Uh, that's probably a little more power, but then... The rest of this is just a giant heat sink. So, you know, on the one hand, this is a simple modular controller, but on the other hand, this is difficult, bordering on impossible um, to maintain over the long term. So, it's just not my preferred way of doing it. Okay. So, CN3. 100 volts. X. Okay. X. And I went ahead and labeled these so I'd know where they went. Just in case. Because I don't want to get everything reversed. And then this one's got a label on it. X and Y. This is S. Oh, that's that. And then these are little cable traps. Got a CN1 missing. Okay. So we've 
got some more stuff on the front that we need to screw in. I'll be back in a minute. So it's all buttoned up. No magic smoke. Fires right up. Everything's working. And that's actually a pretty clean. I like this. This is a clean uh, solution to this problem. I'm going to add a zip tie right there to make sure there's no cable strain. So let me do that and then I'm going to button this up. 